again, welcome or welcome but to 4F Beauty, when will I be YouTube famous? I don't know, after a joke like that, probably never. However, hopefully you are currently watching me in black and white because this is the continuation of my pick series and I am delighted that one of my OG girlies are back to collab with me again. It's the beautiful Nona from a hashtag my so called life 1977. So, if you want to find out exactly which photo is our inspiration this time and how this looks in a glorious technicolour then my friend you are in precisely the right place grab a drink grab a snack put your feet up and enjoy because here it comes hey welcome back for the intro right fingers crossed that intro was in black and white I haven't forgotten yet, and this is episode 33, I think, 33 of this series, that, that's crazy. Um, I never expected it to get this popular, I honestly didn't, but I'm so pleased that it has. Um, this is the continuation of my pick series or photo inspiration where two people use one photo, you can only use the colours in the photo, in your look. You don't have to use all of them, but you cannot add colours that are not in the picture. I am collabing once again with the ever beautiful Nona from hashtag my so called life 1977, and she has chosen this gorgeous, spoopy Halloween picture. I love it. So you've got on my screen at least, because I'm looking at it on my phone here, because magic of magic of the movies, I haven't put this edited in yet. I'm waving in thin air. I feel like who's it when he was who brought a rabbit? What was his name? Oh, I don't know. Someone will tell me. Anyway. Um, shh. Busy. Rude. Um. So I've got sort of yellows and golds and oranges for the, the sort of the, the graveyard and the trees and the pumpkins. You've got beautiful black cat. You've got skeleton in a pair of blue jeans for some reason. Love that. The gorgeous greeny grey gravestones. Huge great tree with three owls and a pair of eyes which could be a fourth owl. And if you know me, you know how much. Go away, emails. <sighs> I swear, my phone has been quiet all morning. I press record. Email. Email. Notification. Email. Shh. Don't you know I'm talking to my beautiful 4F family? Hmm. As I was saying, those of you who know me know that I love my owls. Or newts, as me and my husband call them, because... When he was a baby, he had a little owl toy that he used to call Newts. Actually, he called him Owly, but he was a Newts. Don't ask. You think I'm crazy? You should meet my husband. We'll make a perfect pair, we really do. Um, and then obviously you've got that gorgeous sort of citrusy, yellowy, green moon with a bat in front of it. Oh, I love that so much. So I'm really going to have fun with this. So I have pulled two palettes for the oranges and the golds and the purples. I've got the mini jawbreaker because I haven't given this one as much love as I should have done. I had so many palettes to review recently. And I grabbed my Sample Beauty Hydrographic palette because we've got the greens, the purples, the blues, and that gorgeous citrusy yellowy green there that I can use for the moon. So, that's the picture. I've told you the rules. Now I'm going to zoom you in and have a chat about eye shapes. Now, I am still a, um, a teaching channel. 
the fact that I go slowly enough for beginners to keep up with me also is useful for me because of my chronic pain. I cannot blend as quickly as I would like. If you can blend much quicker than me or you are more advanced, there is a speed widget up there. Please feel free to use it, that's what it's there for. And when I zoom you in and talk you through eye shapes, if you're one of my regulars and you know what I'm going to be saying, just skip forward until I wave a... I was going to say wand, but no, it's a brush. When I wave a wand at you, a brush at you. When I wave a brush at you with colour on it, let's get you zoomed in. Clearly I need more coffee this morning. Right, mind you I have been up since half past four. Fraction on that, I think. There we go. Right, face is washed, moisturised, SPF'd, and primed. And as usual, I have got my Crow and Pebble eye primer on. Love this, it goes on non sticky, so you don't have to set it. You can blend on it straight away with colours, unless it's a pigment, in which case, obviously, you have to do the tap, 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 then the blend. Um, I have not used my MAC Soft Ochre Paint Pot since I've had that. Um, because my MAC Soft Ochre Paint Pot is very yellow toned. You can see it's all starting to dry up around the edges where I've not been using it. But it is very yellow toned compared to my skin. So I bought this white primer when I tried their pastel pigments back in the summer. Um, and I haven't used anything else since. It's by far the best primer I've ever used. Um, yes, I have a discount code. No, it's not affiliated. All my discounts are listed in the description box. Right, eyes. Now, I have the same problem that people with hooded lids get, in that I get transference of colour from the, uh, the main mobile lid onto the static lid. If I am cutting my crease, I can't just cut the socket. I've got to go onto the upper lid. And even when I'm using glitter, and glitter glue, I get a bare patch right through the middle there. But I don't have hooded eyes. But a lot of people with eyes like mine, which are deep set eyes, mistakenly are told or mistakenly believe they have hooded eyes because we have the same issues. I'm going to talk you through how to tell the difference between the two types of eyes, and then I'm going to explain to you how to use a workaround so you can follow any tutorial that you see. Okay? Now, with my brows relaxed and looking straight forward, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. So I haven't got hooded lids. It's only if the upper lid completely covers, right down to the lash line, part or all of your mobile lid, that you have a full or a half hooded lid, or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. I will demonstrate with this eye, because this is one that I'm blinding, so I can make sure I'm still in camera <coughs> and still in focus. If I cover my visible mobile lid and close my eye, you can see I've got as much, if not more, lid that tucks back away. And if I cover the static lid above it and do the same thing, you can see I've got static lid there that also folds back away. And it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that give me the same issues that the hooded lids get. So. Now you know how to work out which type of eye you've got, here's the workaround. If you've got hooded lids, get a brush, something like this, or a pencil brush, and sketch out on your static lid where you need your new crease to fall. Now obviously that's going to reduce the space between the crease and brow, so just use slightly smaller blending brushes, and if necessary, don't leave the gap. If I'm doing an editorial look, I'll go right up to my brows anyway. But most looks, I leave a gap between the colour and my brow. You may find you have to go right up to the brow in order to, to get all the colours in that you want. If, however, like me, you have deep set eyes, all you need to do is, when you're putting a colour through the crease, relax, sit back, relax your brows, and just make sure you brought it up high enough that you can see it above the crease when your eyes are open. It's that simple. Enough chatting. I want to put some colour on my eyeballs. Yes, I do. So, I'm going in with a Luxie 205 tapered blending brush, which is a big old puffy round brush. 
and I'm going into Phyto in the um, Hydrographic palette which is very very dusty like Anastasia so I'll just tap back off into that and then when I go back in again the next bit I just pick up the loose pigment look at that isn't that stunning that's beautiful right so I'm gonna actually pop that just on the outer upper corner now I usually struggle here and here with dry patches so I'm taking a bit of a risk putting this really light one on the top there but eye primer really does help because obviously I want this to represent the moon I used the moon in Armstrong walking on my face oh my husband's got me watching the mighty bush And obviously I'm repeating the same this side. Now you can notice I'm doing circular movements. This direction going towards the nose, a bit of a bounce, and this direction coming back out again. Because I'm 45, I've lost 14, 15 stone over the last few years. So as you can see, the skin of my eyelids moves. But by doing circular movements like this, you're very gently moving the skin around, holding the brush right at the end so I put as little pressure on as possible. So you don't get that telltale tiger white stripe. Now I do get telltale tiger white stripes in one area, which is here, because you can see super, super deep creasing that I've got there. That was called when I was five years old at the ophthalmic hospital. So 40 years ago, and now the damage is finally showing. That. I'm just going to clean my brush off, have another look at my picture. Mm. So the sky is a mixture of blue and purple. So I'm going to go into think Atlantis which is the deep deep blue but it's not it's the it's the matte not the not the shimmer and I'm gonna continue that along this side here and as you can see I tapped an awful lot off because I want to have control about how deep this colour goes and obviously I want to blend it in over there. It's far easier to build a colour up with a bit of patience than it is if you put too much on to start with. So, Nona, I have collabed with her, wow, loads of times now. Um, initially we collabed one-on-one, -on -one. and then with Anya we became the Bitches of Eastwick. We've also done um, big group collabs together. Uh, she and I are also in a collab with... Laura from Gold Star Work, which is uh, three continents and one palette that we do every month using the Colourpop um, monotone palettes. Uh, and she's just, she is one of the loveliest people you will ever, ever meet. Um, I've only ever heard her say a bad word about one person and that person is the reason that the Bitches of Eastwick was started because 
this particular person has a front that they are so lovely and so nice and everybody thinks they're wonderful when in reality they're a grade A bitch they'll only collab with you if you can do them a favour either in terms of numbers, reach or if they've decided that um, you're not as pretty as them yes, that was actually said so they may be conventionally pretty but to my mind anybody who behaves like that pretty damn ugly uh, and that's and even then she was still not as vicious about the particular person as I've just been but I'm currently in a lot of pain I've had very little sleep and bitch mode is engaged just cleaned that brush off on a clean washcloth and I'm swapping to the Jawbreaker palette and I'm going in with this Boozy Shop tapered blending brush so it's still a round blending brush but as you can see it's a lot smaller well however wide the head of the brush is that's how wide it will blend out to so you can see this one's a lot lot smaller because I want more control about where the purple goes and I'm going into purple punch which is just such a beautiful colour. I love this little mini jawbreaker palette but as I said I've not given it as much love as I should have done simply because I've had I've been lucky enough that lots of people have wanted to collab with me and either the collab that we're doing this palette didn't have the colours that I needed or it was a specific palette that we were collabing with which wasn't this one um, and then when Nona sent this photo across I just thought oh that's perfect I can give my jawbreaker some my mini jawbreaker some love I'm so glad that he's done this smaller palette and I'm glad that um, he's doing a smaller one the Shane palette comes out Friday of next week. Um, I'm really glad that it is going to Beautylish because at first it looked like it was just going to be going to Morphe and Jeffrey's site but with Beautylish they do easy pay which means that if they do the um, offer price like they did with the jawbreaker where if you buy the big one and the little one at the same time I think you saved about I think it was about 10 15 bucks you saved um, and I wouldn't be able to take advantage of that if I didn't have the easy pay now purples are the most difficult colour to create and I am putting this on in very very light layers if you were wondering because I don't want the purple to over dominate the other colours that I've got on here and I'm also trying to make sure that when I blend the colours together they're not going muddy which I think I'm managing to do Yeah, so Nona, bless her heart, she um, she lost one of her dogs recently and her dogs are like her babies because that's something else that she, Anya and I have got in common, none of us have got kids um, I physically can't have them I've um, in the past I've managed to get pregnant but I could never stay pregnant unfortunately and now at 45, it's too late for me. And unfortunately, I was told in no uncertain terms that I wouldn't be allowed to foster or adopt because, and this is before my illness was bad, before I had all these disabilities to worry about. Because I looked into 
fostering and adoption about ten years ago before I was with Chris. And uh, I was told in no uncertain terms that I would not be considered for fostering because there's no guarantee I'd still be around when the child reached their 18th birthday. And that I would not be setting a good body image to the child. Funny, there's me thinking that what a child needed was love, but apparently they need a, a skinny parent. See what I mean about bitch mode being invite in, in play? <laughs> But yeah, none of us have got kids, and like I said, unfortunately, Nona lost lost Mojo a little while ago. So a load of us did a little surprise collab for her, where we did a look based on Mojo's colours, which is black, white and grey. And um, her favourite eyeshadow colour is orange. So a lot of us incorporated either orange or purple, which is her favourite overall colour. I'm just sitting back and checking that I've got the same shape both sides, because obviously your eyes are not symmetrical unless you're James Charles and you Photoshop them. But that's cheating. I don't use any kind of filters or anything. Okay, I like that. I like that a lot actually. Right, now I'm going to do the lid. Mm. And I'm going to start off, oh for goodness sake, shush. I'm going to start off, this is a, it looks like it's a Jeffrey, but it's from AliExpress. <laughs> and it's a really nice sort of, I think it's meant to be a lip brush. But it's great for getting into the corners. Never go into a pressed pigment with a wet brush. I'm nearly at the end of this setting spray, but that's okay. So I'm going to start off by going into Slice, which is this gorgeous, gorgeous yellowy gold. Look at that. Actually, it's almost an orangey gold. And wet both sides of the brush. I always sort of twirl it around in my hand like this to dry the ferrule off so you don't get any moisture going down, loosening the glue, holding the bristles in. And I'm going to grab a little mirror here to look down into so that you can still see what's going on. And I'm going to start that right in the corner. Just gently bring that out to roughly where my iris stops. Ish. Ish. Right now, have I got barcoding? Yes, I have. So let me just grab that brush back with a little bit more of purple punch on it. Just. deal with that barcoding just there. <clears throat> Clean the brush back off. Dry the other brush off because obviously it was wet. And then go back into slice again. This is a very, very soft pigment if you have this palette. You do not need to press very hard on it at all to get pigment up onto your brush. Now I do have to stretch my lid out for this otherwise the shimmer shade instead of being firmly pressed onto the lid like this ends up building up in those deep creases and then throughout the day as it dries it starts to cascade down my face which is not good at all. 
like I said, do not do that with your eye if you don't already have issues like I have. Cleaning the brush off and going into Orange Crush. Love this shade so much. Look at that. It's like a neon. And then I'm going to use this for the middle section. Just blending it in with that orange gold. Yes, I could have cut the crease, but I didn't want to. I wanted a more softer look. I didn't want to cut the crease today. I just wanted all the colours to gently meld into one another. Nice. Clean the brush off. This also is quite a soft shade. So again, you don't need to press very hard. I think I've finally, finally finished that setting spray. So I can grab another one from over here. This one, this bloody lightning glow, which it leaves this mica everywhere. Which I won't mind so much when it's on a shimmer shade. When you use it as a setting spray, it's awful. It leaves you with like these little white speckles everywhere, and I'm like the pale as a pint of milk. So, for me to notice it, and it gets all over your clothes and in your hair, and oh. I think I need to. Do the other side with some of this as well, otherwise it's not going to be a matching mess, shall we say. <coughs> and then just drag some of that. I'm just going to dry it and clean up that brush off. That setting spray has made this, the, the thing sticky. I'm going to get a tiny, tiny little bit of the gold and just drag that across onto the orange to just help blend those two shades in together. Like so. Wow, yeah, that really has made that handle sticky. That's horrible. Oof. Do not get this or any of their other three colours of this. It's bloody awful. Right. I'm now going to go into Bite Me. is a purple shimmer. I might actually wrap the washcloth around the handle of the brush this time. I 
and I'm going to use this on the outer corner. Blending it in with the orange and then carefully blending it up into the purple matte. Dry the brush off, go back into Bite Me. Protect the brush handle. Going with this goddamn awful spray. And do the same thing on this side. So I blend the orange and the purple. And then blend the purple up into the purple matte. Hmm. I like. I like this a lot. Now let's put that terrible spray down over there. Right, this is just a cloth with some micellar water on. And I'm just going to straighten up the edge. This is why I always do my base afterwards. Yes, you could use tape. But for the tape to be sticky enough to stop any powder from going underneath, it's going to pull on that delicate skin around your eyes when you take it off. We've established already how delicate the skin on your eyes is, so please don't be silly. Right, I am going to very briefly pause you while I pop some foundation and whatnot on. You will see absolutely no delay at all. I'll be back instantly. I, however, will see you the very next time that I press the record button. Hello. I am back, as you can see. I decided on purple browns to continue the night sky theme. And also because it's known as favourite overall colour. And she chose the picture this time, so, you know, why not? Right, I'm going in with this one next. This is my little flat top brush. I'm going to go back into Mini Breaker. Have I got a brown in the picture? That's a very good question. Let me have a look. Yes, the owls have got some brown on them. Excellent. I'm going to go into Hot Fudge. And I'm going to use that just to buff along underneath my lower lash line. I love flat top brushes for this. You can get right tight up under your lashes. You can use a smudger brush if you don't have a brush like this, but I find this is by far the easiest way to get up underneath the bottom lashes. And now I'm going to swap back to the Hydrographic palette. I'm going in with this brush. This is from the Tarte Graveyard Girl palette. Again, it's flat topped, which I love, but it's chunky, so it's great for blending out. And I'm going to go into Lagoon to pick up on the greens that are in that 
tree trunk. I'm just going to use that to buff out the lower lash line. Really soften it. Now, I always said if I won money on the lottery, which is difficult seeing as how I don't play it, but there you go. Um, I would love to sort of take a long cruise across to America and then hire a huge, great, like, 1950s caddy. The one with the, um, the lights at the back that look like, um, like rocket ships almost. Is that the 54 or is that 52 caddy? I'm not sure. Um, and I would just love to drive and drive around and meet all of my friends that I collab with um, and Nona would absolutely be very very close to the top of my list if not the top of my list depending on where the ship docked obviously right I'm blethering I do this quite a bit Right, I'm going to go in, this is a House of Sparkles, which is a UK brand, indie brand, and I'm going in with Fallen Angel. It's a beautiful, sort of, champagne shade, and I'm going to pop that up under the tail of my brow. This is actually a lip brush that I bought from eBay probably a decade ago. then pop some on the inner corner and what I like to do with my eye shape is bring it along under the tear duct and just blend it in with the colours underneath my eye. You don't have to, you can just leave it at that but as you can see with my eye shape I think it looks better finished off kind of thing. And now for a pièce de résistance, so to speak, I have got a little pot here that I bought from I My Glitter last year, and it is a pot of tiny little bats. Cut out of shiny holographic black reflective material. And because on the picture there is a bat in front of the moon, I'm going to put a bat on the moon each side. So, on my Pokemon phone case, I'm squeezing a little bit of this NYX glitter glue. And going in with, this is, remember I said, if, you're any, if any of you have seen me do a cut crease, you'll see that I use um, a brush that's designed for nail acrylic. This is one of the brushes from that set. Look how thin it goes, it's amazing. So, I'm going to grab a little bit of the glitter glue. Just pop it there. And add a bat. And I'm going to do exactly the same thing over on this side. If you haven't got holographic bats, but if you feel artistic enough, you could always use black eyeliner and paint them on. I've deliberately put the bats at different heights each side, just to mess 
with my OCD and everybody else's. that glue to go off. Yeah this phone case is awesome partly because it has baby base on it but also because it's great for putting pigments on, glitter glue, mixing foundations if you need to change the shade of it. Awesome. Right I'm now going to pause you for one last time while I chuck some more of this highlight everywhere, do my mascara, choose a lipstick and do something with my hair and I'll be back with my final look once again for you there is no delay so I'll see you right now voila I have finished I decided to try popping some of this Revolution Raw Purple brow pomade in as an eyeliner to see if that will actually last any longer than eyeliners usually last on me which is not very long at all. Uh, I used the Revolution, the new one, the Blowout High Volume Mascara with Cannabis Sativa in it. Huge, huge brush. If you've got tiny eyes don't bother with that because you are never going to get the brush on your eyes. Um, and the lipstick is this Physician's Formula Murumuru Butter in shade Moving to Brazil. Murumuru Butter Lip Cream in Moving to Brazil which I love I really do I'm actually really really ridiculously happy with how this look has turned out I'm going to put the picture over here again what do you think? does this represent the photo well enough? with my little bats on the moon? on the moon Right, if you're one of my 4F babies, please double check you're still subscribed. YouTube is unsubscribing so many people, uh, not just from my channel, from loads of people's channels. Um, it's really frustrating, uh, it's frustrating for me, I've been deleted from channels that I follow. Uh, so please just, even if I'm still appearing in your recommended films, just double check you are still subscribed. And if you've got the bell rung, just make sure it definitely says all notifications because I know a lot of people haven't been getting notifications. Once you've done all of those marvellous things, I'm going to need you to go across to the beautiful Nona's channel and check out her look using her choice of photo as inspiration. Will it be similar? Will it be totally different? That's what I love about this. This is, I think, like I said, this is, I think this is, must be episode 33. So far, out of all of these, there's only been two looks that have been similar, and even those were different enough that they weren't the same. Um, and one of those was a photo that I'd taken of Ypres Town Square in the snow at Christmas. So it was very sort of sepia toned, all browns and yellows, and even then, the look was different enough that it was similar but it was different enough that you could say they were two different definitely different looks um, and that's that's why I started this series because to me it's fascinating to see what inspiration different people draw from different photos so if you are here new from Nona's channel hi hello welcome I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, if you've made it this far through the film, I'm guessing you must have liked just a little bit, even if it is just the bats or the, the batty bird doing the makeup. We would absolutely adore to have you join the 4F family, and it's so easy to do. All you've got to do is turn that subscribe button from red to grey, and then jump through the myriad of hoops that YouTube insists you jump through now to get notifications. I've also got an awful lot of other films that you can watch if you've enjoyed this and feel like indulging in a few more. Right, all that remains for me to say as ever is you'll stay fab.
marvellously batty. And I'll see you next time. Bye for now.